Hello, my name is Sam Candy and I'm an advisor at FLM. Uh, FLM are proudly sponsoring the National League and we are really looking forward to the Super League in April, which is taking place over four days at This short and sweet video is simply an introduction to what we do and how we do it. Specifically, how we help the So what is it that we actually do? Well, we help people be in the best possible financial position. Specifically, we make sure that clients achieve their goals and aspirations and a holistic quality of financial planning. We work from the long term to build a plan which is importantly facilitated. We also ensure that we have to and improve our understanding from all of the natural world uh, to those who don't work in the industry. When it comes to understanding education or finance, we feel the sports industry specifically is somewhat overlooked, where people have less possibly conversations on finances, and there are typically no centralised wellbeing service that would otherwise be available. Other paid career options, length of career, as well as structure, employed, self-employed, and other employees. Very difficult to navigate through all this on its own. As a key sponsor of the IRTPA special league, I'm available to you as a problem. If you are interested in learning more, or skill up and actually getting the plans to get into a better position, please do reach out. Thank you, and looking forward to seeing you. Hello and welcome back to the Queen's Club for the uh, 2024 uh, FLM Super League. Your commentators for this match are going to be A View from the Hazards with Ben Taylor Matthews and Rob Shankman. Take it away boys. You never miss mate, you never miss. I was just about to say, like introduce it as a podcast but he's beating us to it. Unbelievable, it's it's a shame. doesn't miss. Anyway, uh, I'm up here, you're up here because this is going to be an absolute belter. Lewis Gordon against world number 12, Lewis Williams. Oh, Ooh. has a chase too. What do you reckon, Ben? How are you calling this one? We've got the stats on the screen. So, so we've got, um, yeah, I mean, that, like the number three players are pretty level in handicap, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like 0.2 between all of them or something. So the court adjustment of Queens is 1.9, which means he's 1.9 worse. At the Queen's Club, according to our take, stat man. I'd take Lewis Gordon off nine handicap here and tell you what. Um, singles or doubles? <laughs> sing, I mean, sing, I think that's pretty far off the mark, but um, either way, um, I think. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of champion finalists, champion, you know, there's a lot going on there. The Emsworth Cup, I mean, no one knows what it is, but he's won it. Um, I'll tell you what, he's won the cup and the trophy. I don't know what that means. <laughs> But yeah, satellite winner, a category A finalist. He'll be hoping to uh, do the same uh, next weekend in Manchester. Am I correct in assuming that he would have lost to Darren Long maybe in that? He fight? did, yeah, beat Ed Kay in three sets in the semi. That's uh, a very good win. Yeah, he did back in 2018 as well. Um, got his recent results. A lot, oh my God, a lot of three setters. A lot of Tabators. A lot of three setters. He loves three sets at the moment. So uh, that won't be happening today. And here we go, Lewis Williams, handicap 6.3, two points worse, in inverted yeah. commas, at Queen's. So we've got an eight against a nine here. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we, ha we do have an eight against a nine, so literally nothing to separate them. Uh, these two have battled it out once already this season at Prestead. It was 6-5 in the third. They've both got the same. They both love hitting winners. Um, it's just symmetrical. So this is, is going to be a great match. Darren Long marking. First match of the Sayers Slayers versus the Phase Forces, and I think both players would be quite happy at the hazard end here. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Well, oh. I um, had Lewis Gordon at Bristol um, a couple of weeks ago as the players are being introduced. Had him at Bristol a couple of weeks ago. Went through a couple of kind of options for him, yeah. strategy-wise. Let's see if he a listened, b puts it into practice, or c writes it off entirely. <laughs> to contain, isn't it? Oh, that's a great Oh, what a start. Now the shirt Lewis is wearing bought in that Philadelphia outlet in the cost. Oh, yeah. 
good day that was. He's got the shorts to match the boot as well, he's got the full outfit on. So he's looking good if nothing else. So I can confirm that Lewis uh, Gordon has completely written off every strategic. I'm going to disagree with you there. I think he was going gallery with that second ball. I think he was looking to get out of the point early. So not many railroads being served at Quinn so far this week. Shanks, tell us why and well, what your thoughts on why. Uh, it's pretty difficult to get that ball to rip back off the back wall. Uh, the penthouse is pretty grippy, so that takes out a lot of the spin. Um, you're going to struggle to get that railroad tight, and obviously, with it being such a bouncy back wall, um, hard to uh, yeah, um, hard to stop people forcing or hitting an attacking shot. So we've got a head-to-head -head here. So Lewis knows, or Lewis Williams, has won three matches to one here in the head-to-head. -head, so. He'll certainly be confident in this one. Wow. The stats have gone in front of us. But I'm going to assume this is probably the first time they've played each other in a short set. Would that be absolutely reasonable? He's up there. Like the aggression, they take it off. into the corner, that's just what Lewis wants, I'm sure. Yeah, I to be fair, it's, I think it's probably more to stop the forward. I'm right, how are we going to refer to these two? We can't keep saying Lewis. We'll just go, let's go Gordo, Gordo and Lewis. Gordo and Lewis, right. So from now on, Lewis means Williams. Oh wow, that's great. Yeah, I, to Lewis Williams, I wouldn't be serving high. I'd definitely be serving something a bit quicker with a lot of bounces, just to get him moving around. I think the idea though is if it's tight enough to the back wall there's no free like he's not forcing that. So he's not he's not getting his preferred option, I think. Yeah. It's probably the thought process there. John Cena, you can't see me. <laughs> I actually must say having um, been on the receiving oh we go the head to head again. So we've got yeah, three three six six three six three six six five six two six five six five so it's been close every time two six three six five or two six five and third no short set though who do you think that favours i think lewis gordon starts faster than lewis williams so i think it favours lewis gordon and i think also with a shorter set you know not not having a crack at anybody's fitness levels here or anything but you can really go all out knowing that you, know, you don't need to sustain it for three hours. That's with that first game, that's a really heavy cut. That's also loose. Looser. <laughs> Looser still. Hey, should we write off that rally? Yeah, I think we'll forget about that one. through was that? Yeah. Ben I think he's listening to you now. Well look when you think Gordo yeah. and you think weapon yeah. what's the first thing that springs to mind? That's, right? That's what you think of. So in order to try and become a more rounded player which I'm all for he's you know putting balls in the corners a lot more and things like that. Now as, as an opponent of Gordo the one thing you don't want him to do is smash it at you. Correct. So when he starts chipping it into the corners, do you not kind of think... Perfect. Well, yeah, great. I'm, I'm, I'm avoiding his biggest weapon here. Yeah, getting into a rally with him is probably where you want to be. So I think he's just trying to be the complete player, but I, I just kind of pointed out, look, you know, you're a big frame. You're, just, you're naturally a heavy guy. You don't want to be going corner to corner for five sets. If the ball's there, if, you're, if the option's there to win the point, win the point. Keep the point, you know, keep them short. Lovely shot. Yeah. Lovely 
I would actually, if I'm being a bit brutal here, I would actually say De Gordo has a slightly better, more conventional floor game than Lewis Williams. Lewis plays it more. Correct. It's a good shot. So good at Queens that ball, isn't it? Yeah. Just come so quick off that main. 
No, I, I knew. I, I didn't know what the chase was, but the last minute choice from Bordo to hit that. It's an absolute thrill fest out of there. That's a lot. <laughs> That's four of the last six points. Who needs the floor? When you think about it, it is absolutely incredible. If you just take a look at the size of the court in front of us right now, we've got obviously a great vantage point being up on the play line. The size of the court, all of the options available to you. That box in the corner is pretty small. And the regularity that these guys hit it is, is incredible. Especially in Queen's Oak, you really get a lot of brilliance like that ball just flies, doesn't it? Yeah. You think of other courts, like there's a Lord on Saturday, and there's balls you just think, oh, that's going to the ground, and it just drops low, and you're like, how? On the basis you've just mentioned, Lord, do you want to just plug your gold racket in quickly? Nah. <laughs> you win, you move on. You lose, you move on. That's a great get. Oh, set up, though. Is it going in? It's always going to be Mabel there, isn't it? I think that's the kind of defence where he'll be a bit disappointed himself if he's missed that. Yeah, it's certainly a gettable one. For sure. I mean, Lewis has put it on target, but it was gettable. That's a good, good fake. It's a great shot. Thirty all. I think uh, Darren said forty thirty. Okay. I think. It's always a shame when you see it flying to the grill. <laughs> <laughs> I think both players stop there. Um, so we worse than two work to do for Mr. Gordon. But um, Lewis with a fantastic deep length um, at the moment so far. Ben, if you're trying to hit a good cut shot at Queens, what are you aiming for? What sort of line on the floor are you aiming for? I mean, if you can get that first bounce deep, then obviously it's very, very good. But I mean, I've always found Queen's quite inconsistent, to be honest. I mean, that's, a, that's not a very nice word to use, but, you know, I just think my theory is just get the ball into the corners and let them try and figure it out, because it doesn't feel like it's a very kind of regular, true result. Oh, hello. Ooh, that's a good ball. He's left it. Oh, it went by a mile. Oh, oh, it must have been like half a yard. It went by a mile. That's, that's how reluctant he was there at the back end. <laughs> He's willing to give the point away. I tell you what, it's a lost art that sometimes cutting the ball so much it really skips off the floor. Yeah, a fuzzle rate right shot. It's going to be a stroke. It's a great shot. Stroke great length. Let's put the last point behind. So, point here for 3 1. Some 
poor decisions at the moment. He'll know that. Yeah, he will know that. It's the sort of the pressure, the format, the set time. I think we've got a lot time to think in the set time. You look at both of our games, I think we both went up early. So you were three love, I was three one. There's still ages to yeah, get. It's a long way. Well, case in point today, what were we, six, two up, seven, three up? Seven, three, yeah. Yeah, so there's still got loads left. That's down. Definitely six, two. I remember thinking, oh, just six games in a row. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we just lost the set, I'm good. I was actually thinking, like, oh, God. I've lost that set with Tiller, but... I but actually thought, by the way, I had a mo moment of... Because um, we, we had a match point at 8-7. Yeah. And we were, I think it was like Chase worse than four or something, or the hazard end. And anyway, it got it got to your advantage, and I then hit a force halfway in the net, and I thought that was the match. So I turned around to Levi and went to shake his hand, and he was like changing ends to get back under the grip. And I was like, mate, we're done, didn't it? And I just heard Neil go, eight all, and I was like, oh, actually, I actually genuinely thought, <laughs> genuinely uh, thought we were toast. Nowhere near. <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere near toast, Last. That's a good ball. Going to take a boast here? No, he's just going for a drive. That's a good one. It's lost the chase. It's a little bit too high up on the wall. A little bit too high up. It's unlucky that. It's unlucky. I, think I like the play. Yeah. I really like the play. Yeah, it's that shot well actually. Um, rolls and Nick into the forehand corner. But lost it on this occasion. Worse than the yard. Wow. And here we go. It's 40-30 now. Great oh, get, well. great get. That's a good shot as well. Keep the pressure. Oh, that's a great shot. Well played. Good intensity, really good, really good. Great get. Backed it up with a good half volley. And you talk about the frustration of like missing a ball. There's a ball right behind him now. So. The back of the on Lewis Williams. It's just superb, isn't it? As soon as that ball left Gordo's racket, Lewis was like, that's back ball first. The racket is, is up there. I'm ready to pounce like a viper. So in Philadelphia, we played some squash doubles. That's a great shot. Both, both these players, me and Luke Jones Casey, Luke Gordon was like, Lewis, you're sweet. It's like Harry Potter. Like you're casting a spell. <laughs> in Guardian Leviosa. Great. Thank you, love. Sensible. Consider both of these guys good, good players from the hazard end. Good return, big yeah. returns to serve, big right? Time, big and yet, time. you know, over the course of time, Lewis Williams has taken a gallery there early on in the game. So whilst being very happy from the hazard end, backs himself to hit targets and good returns, and get Gordon on the back foot. The, the opportunities take for serve is still at the forefront of his mind. Yeah, I just I think when you're playing that poker game, um, the odds just aren't in your favour from the hazard exactly. end. Exactly. Unless you are literally not firm. He's like, you know when we talk about XG, like the only player to break the XG model is Lionel Messi. There's one of him ever. I think about how many footballs there are. You just can't really win from that hazard end. Yeah, you, can, you can limit the damage or do some damage, but you're still, still more likely to do the business from the service end. That's a great time. Take a gallery there. That's oh. a great shot! Oh. 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 Wow! Off the net call as well! Incredible! Sometimes Ben, you've just got to accept that a player is more talented out there than Oh, I completely agree, but it's just, you don't need to be talented if you just chip that into Hasley Door. Oh, oh wow! Touche! Interesting, that's the first dead on of the match. To have really taken off many dead-ons. They're trying to broaden their horizons. That's, uh, that's 
show off the full repertoire coming. Three all. Seven. Brilliant. Yeah, slightly less crucial when there's first and nine, isn't it? So what would the equivalent be? That's what you can do. That's what you can do. What's the equivalent of the crucial seven? Like the crucial thirteenth or something? The crucial ninth, I reckon, to go five four. First to nine? I don't know. Crucial ninth game. Six five is bigger than five four, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. That's very, very good ball. Good the pressure, the pressure could be coming. Oh, he's missed it! It's a stroke. Oh. This is one thing I get frustrated about with players is when I see them go up to defend the grill. I give them the grill. And just if they miss, then you've got a better opportunity. Right. Yeah, actually, if you take that, take that last ball there, Gordo's got a basic backhand in the middle of the court, but he's lost the point. Because Lewis has missed, not because he's, he's yeah, exactly. I say it to both of these two actually, they're like, no, no, you're wrong, you're wrong. But right, we just got to play both of them to play the mm. Anyway, good serve. Thirty all, three all, thirty all. Oh, there's been quite a few, quite a few gifts down there from Gordon on the turn of serve, isn't there? We factored up with some winners, but I think that's just movement. That's just like a movement. Just a bit casual. Say, as the team captain, is going to be fuming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's not the kind of guy who would. Uh, is he going to have a word? Leave yeah. any expense spared on the well, turn. Well, with, with Bryn's style of play, he's not exactly kind of, you know, gung ho. Take soak up the soak up the errors, is he? He's going to be livid. This forehand that Lewis had. That was for the gallery. Didn't take it on, missed. And then here we go. Oh, that's just an absolute beauty. Uh, Benno, have we got any uh, stats you can put up on the screen? No stats? Put, put on spot. Oh, look at that. It's good oh. length as well. New balls, please. This weekend, oh, here MVP we go. rankings. Oh, I'm on the board. You are on the board. So are you. Yeah, played two though, and there's people ahead of him who played one. Wolf, 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 top of the MVP. Two, two from two. I can see him up here. Been very, very good. He's, he's got to be happy with himself. His Michael Jordan shoes and thinking about the uh, <laughs> new racket he might get. Isn't it? It's not, I mean, apart from the high serve, if you really get it going, it's not really a serve as court. Yes. Yeah, so you're seeing a lot of variation from the players here. But at the same time, you know, it, it's not really a serve as court until you suddenly find a really good area. You know, you, 
you earlier were serving some good bobbles to Levi where you kind of go, yeah, I can have a go at that, I can have a go, and then suddenly you've got nothing but a bow down. So it's it's not serve as caught until it suddenly is, if that makes sense, any sense at all. I just followed the example of like Jamie Douglas guy who I've played a lot against and he literally has that. That's a good shot. He just hits a railroad and runs around the twist and a bottle. And I, that's all he serves it. Keep it simple. Know what your game is and stick to it. To Williams, frustration from Gordon. That's a great pass. Such a good one. To take the put, take the sting out of that final floor, let alone the town though, it's just Mate, how much crazy. Is, how much does his volume come on in the two years he's been uh, playing all the time? Yeah. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Still leaving better than half balls to the back wall there. <laughs> I think he had a fair distance to cover, that's a good shot. Um, you're absolutely good. right though, like his volume has improved massively. <laughs> Two chases. 4-3 to Williams. I think that is 50 in love Williams, just that ball off the moon with as well. That cushion volley. I'm shocked, as we see I'm, that I'm shocked there haven't been as many dead ones as I thought. I mean, I, I can't believe there's not been more. At least attempts. Maybe both of these guys are thinking, I could beat him in the corner. Yeah, well also, you know, it's... it's balls are, I'd say, a little bit bigger here than... The, Sometimes are so it's not quite as quick off that back wall, so you can get you know. I was just about to say that's not necessarily forcible, but Lewis has done that. But you know, there's all just kind of getting to the back wall a lot slower at the moment, so you're not getting that help. to leave it and it's going to be worse than last or something and then at the last minute you just hear him go because it's going to land like more than a yard worse which is obviously going to win the chase the last minute he just goes oh no and then like doesn't get the ball back yeah. loses the point he's like 30 to at this point free hit to go 40 to up five more in the fifth loses that point 20 seconds later he's shaking hands lost six five <laughs> incredible No chases were going high again. That looks on the money. That looks on the money. Oh, he's left it. Yeah. He's going to get away with it. Oh, it's a good volley. It's a great time. Yeah. So again, so that, is, that is a prime, a prime example of the you made earlier about running back and cover. That's a straight tander, which is going to hit the side wall underneath the winning gallery. Do anything you like. Mate, everyone's different, you know. Everyone's different. I'm never ever going up to Fender in my life. No way. Okay, round three. Don't sit. Don't sit. If you're going to go high, don't go short. Right? Not to him. Jeez, I'm just going to be like, yeah, you can have to point, mate. 
just run out of the way. That looks better because it's deeper, it's a fault with nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. What's that old saying? I'd rather hit a fault than a bad serve. Oh, yeah. 100%. It's just bubble. Which right. is a shame because I serve so many bad serves. <laughs> Silly mid-arm, what about that? Absolutely underrest the keeper before you got that. <laughs> uh, so up top here we've got a load of big names. We've got Will Flynn, Max Truman, Nino Marola, British Open finalists, Jess Garside and Tara Lee. We have got a full <laughs> Well, crowd love that one, but I hate to disappoint you, it's only worth one point. <laughs> Three dead ons to love though, that's it. Three no one, dead ons. No one not bitter that I can't do it. It's <laughs> fake. That's good ball. That's a very good return as well, actually. Really good response. I like that as well. I don't. It's a floor back wall, you don't want to give him that. Gallery. I think Lewis got himself back into the valley. Oh yeah, I mean, Lewis considering he was on the defensive, that was a very good way back in. Lewis Gordon yeah. very much on top in this game, yeah. um, as we watch a replay. It's great, great, volley great out. grill defence. But look at... Yeah, it's I mean, at that point you're there, right? You've yeah, got to do yeah, something. Yeah. I think I'd be more moving towards the crown in the middle, thinking, right, he's given the grill, I'll cover anything else. Yeah, but I mean, to be fair, he's volleyed that out. Lewis Williams is that hitting it again within a couple of seconds. He hasn't had time to get back, but... As of the line, what do you do at Queen's? You serve a railroad, it's never going to be good, and you just lose the point and you suck it up. Just like that. There you go. That is how you play the hazard at Queen's. You lose the point every time. That's elite commentary, isn't it? <laughs> well, what, do you, what else do you do? Mate, you serve a good railroad. You serve a railroad that can't be good, and then you give them a free splat or a gallery ball. That's how you defend a hazard. You don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just serve a bobble, you know. Well, that's why I serve like a little drag thing or something. I was like, I don't know. Levi was like, do you want me to leave hazards? I'm like, no. Absolutely not. That's a good ball. What a shot that is. Always moving away into the net. Games to five, halfway through this set, and there's not much. Of it. I'm going five games all. Shots. Oh yes. Oh, oh yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> wow. I, I wonder at what point he thought I'm going to hit a dead on off this ball. Then I think he's just like probably halfway through his ball that was a cut shot, and then realised where it was going. <laughs> I'm joking. That's a great finish. Yeah. Look for the volley. Back to away. Nice defensive return. Gallery. Maybe could have done a bit more and then a, and then a leave. So it's, there you go. From somebody who likes to hit targets, leaving it for a chase to get to the service end. Packs himself to win from the right end. I am surprised, I am surprised. <laughs> that is a very, oh. very good shot off the main It's a very, very good shot off the Bordeaux, not happy. Needs to put it behind at the end of the day. It's 15 love down, two chases, like just get over yourself. There we go, we can see it. This is what Lewis Williams would have oh, seen. Top, top as well. <laughs> Excellent shot. Again, something you know, the left handers have had all the all the fun in that grill corner, and some of the righties are trying to level the playing field a bit there. You were uh, building that into your game a little bit, that little backhand roll. Going straight for a little bit more on that ball. I uh, well, just think, you know, if you just chip everything back cross court, if that's, all, if that's all you've got, then you're not surprising anyone. Or the, you know, the change up is the gallery. But that's not scary. So yeah, I mean, I'm starting to realise that is on that back under the grill. Well, that's like just variation. Yeah, yeah. Having having something else just to make them think. Right? Unforced error on the turn. It's a tight ish serve. I'm going to call it an unforced error. Better than three, though. I mean, yeah. you've got me completely. It's He's left it late. There it is, as you said, left it late. It's almost a bit underarm twisty, isn't it? So he gets a bit of kick off that main wall and gets it around the timbre. Six games to four, first time. 
Saying here, if you're if you're Lewis Gordon's captain, yeah, what are you, what are you saying? Your your Prince says at this point. What, are you, like, what are you telling him? Hit the nick, mate. First point. <laughs> on, let's go. I generally would. I'd be like, sir, you best sir. Let's get this first point on the board. You defend three, thirty love, and we're back in the game. Like, it's just you're gonna have to grit it out a little bit here. Maybe you're gonna have to rein your attacking shots in, work for the points a little bit more. But um, the fact of the matter is, if you give them a little cheap game, seven four is a pretty handy lead for Lewis Williams. So. Yeah. Seven fours, big. It's his race to the line. Lewis will be Lewis Williams will be angry at that. That's a, you know the point is there, 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 there. there. He'd uh, he'd be he'd be frustrated to lose that one. So. Oh, great hands. He's done it the wrong way. He's done it. Get it. Oh, better for three. I want it. So from, from our vantage point, absolutely spot on. Yeah, great hold from Lewis Williams. Oh, oh that's a great serve. Okay. Okay. What, a, what a serve. Oh, what a one-two that is. Wow. What a one-two. It's Faye-esque. Just like his captain would have done himself, he's thinking, yeah, mate. That's before Newport, from that. All part of the phase forces. Great That's get great again. Play. Shot get in. Great get. Got it. Did not want to play a backhand there and all of a sudden on the back foot. Yeah. It's amazing. Lewis Williams did not want to hit a backhand there, determined to hit a forehand, had to bunt it back into play and immediately missed the shift. That was a good fight for uh, Gordon there. Yeah. 30 or big point. Don't <laughs> serve that, bro. That's a good post. That's a good post. It the advantage to that serve being so short was it pushed Lewis Williams back so far that it really opened up the forehand side for him. Yeah. I'm amazed by how that rally went on, to be honest. Uh, Gordon will not play at all. Point for 5 6. and he's like, God, I've got to go now. This, of course, being potentially a prequel to the Norton Islands. Yeah, he needs, like, look, both of these players know the importance of this. Just like a bit of a one-up on the opponent. Is it going to be? Is it in? Wow, that's very well dealt with. Oh, that's a good volley as well. Trouble. Oh, here we go. This is amazing. Just did a double the time there. Oh, no, he went for the volley off the back. He's got to leave. Such a good rally. <laughs> Why? Amazing from both players. Why? Why would you do that? <laughs> get it, get it, get it, get it. Yes, you got that. Penthouse as well. Oh, I tell you what, he's got, got away with one there. He's giving the initiative straight back though. What do you do? He's not going to leave it. He's got straight force. Gallery. Wild again. Great gallery. Doesn't need it. Great finish. Wow, this time it's the champagne tennis here. Bit of champagne FLM reception. Williams looks up to the skies there. Knew he had had that rally on a plate. He just needs to get out of service and get yeah. back to basics. He's had that ball at hazard one. He just didn't quite do enough with it. Just take a 
range handle. That looks tidy. Let's hit that one first. That's a good ball. It's a great ball. High opportunity here. in the last couple of games, or certainly game and a half, has really stepped up. The intensity has gone up. I feel like there's one thing you don't want to do to either of these players, it's give them a ball on their racket, and I think Lewis will be a lot of balls to hit. Oh! oh! Try that again! At the end of the day, he's at the hazard end, he's fighting for his life, he's trying to take on these like, aggressive shots. It is just slow it down and get a chase. Main wall Tamba, back wall side wall Nick. Hello. <laughs> That's a beauty. He's gone for the cut force. Oh, oh, he's missed it. Oh, oh, it. oh, and maybe that's exactly what he needed. That's gone from game six all to 40 15 one chase. I'd much rather lose a game keeping the service end. I mean, thanks as well while I've got his break in play uh, to FLM for sponsoring this week, I think. We're obviously in the middle day of the league stage and I think all the players are loving it, loving the team aspect and uh, it's just been, it's been a cracking week to be fair. Good to see different pairings, different oppositions on court, uh, been awesome. Are you going to get better as well? Yeah, I agree mate, I completely agree. This is an awesome match as well, great match to start the evening, it's only going to get better. The beauty about the team aspect, every single match is close. That's correct. Which is great. Has a bend in second. That's a good round, to be fair. That's a good round on this court. The next one's gone high. What's he going to do? Galleries or splat? Splat. Splat oh. gallery. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing a hybrid. He's trying to hit a dead on. <laughs> Either way, it's your done. We are sick to all. Let's go, Lewis. <laughs> Sayers team in the dead on their fired up. For God's sake, you've worked so hard to get back into it. <laughs> Maybe too fired up. Nick. Sensible. Keep the rally short, Lewis. Game management at this stage. You've literally got three. It's a first of three. Cool, yeah. Best of five. Best of five games. How yeah, can you manage the game? Just think like, what are your options? How are you going to keep it tight? Because at the end of the day, you need 12 points to win the match. It's going to be 12 points at some point. So here we go. As we see this one again, is it a force? Is it a cut shot? It's just a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to ask him after. I tell you yeah. what, he will tell everyone in the bar it was a gallery. Yeah, yeah, that's going last gallery. A bludgeon into last gallery. That's one of them where you nick it through the slips and you're like, yeah, I'm in there. Yeah. 15 love receiver. Lewis Williams has always had his nose in front though. He's always just kind of kept himself ahead in this one. Oh, again, he was there. Opportunity. That's his third forehand volley, which I can't which is next to the disappointment. 30 love. Go in the gallery. Watch the You've got a win there. That's a good ball. Deep cut shot. Yeah, loves that ball down the line. Not today. Shot. Sure. Yeah, slightly more spin and lift on that, but 15 40, you won't be too gutted. All about winning the games, exactly. exactly. 30, 30 cushion. 30 40, you'd be interested in. Go again, taking Great. the serve, it's there. Game management. Take yeah. it. Game point up, take, taking a chase will never be a bad option. As Mike Gooding once told me, get the serve sent, you'll win to that next three. If it's right for Lewis Williams here, he'll be 7-6 uh, up. Exactly. 
you know, 40 15, take, take the chance, right? Sacrifice the chase yeah. to be down at the service end. It's a very good, very good shot option there. Just trying to beat the dealer in the casino. <laughs> Blackjack. Yeah. Last gallery. Game point. It's loose. It's not a fault. Three here. He's gone forehand corner. Yes, good option. Go for support, make him play something a bit weird. He's left it. It's worse than last, we think. What does the marker say? Game. Seven games to six. Darren's voice is like a dart announcer. It's like game shots, forces. Seven, six to the forces. Again, taking the serve. I don't hate it. No, no, not at all. It's there. Take it. Business end of the set. Yeah. You'd certainly rather be serving. Um, you know what we were talking about on the podcast about like, if it gets tight between these two? Yes. Lewis Williams winner? I think he's got... I think Lewis has got history, right? Of, like, when, not when the chips are down, but when it's gritty. Lewis has got a history of coming through those matches like time and time again. So... Do you think um, as a player that, that plays on your mind a little bit? I'd prefer to maybe like Brent as, as a who? guy, uh, like as, as the opponent. So when you're playing a player you know like loves the battle, loves a time match, loves a scrap. Like, uh, does that play on your mind as, a, as an opponent? I don't think you're thinking about the other guy, are you? Otherwise yeah, you're, you're just not. kind of thinking, to, at that point you're thinking, this guy's going to be good, I might lose. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, just, you know, and tells you're just getting stuck in. Yeah, but I think if I anything you might, you know, if I'm playing Brent and it's time, it's going to go, I know, I know that I'm not getting anything for free. I think it's so fun to watch you sometimes because you're like, I'm good, I'm just going to choose well. Yeah, I'm going to have to be the best player for myself. Exactly. I'm not going to get anything from this guy. That's fine. I'm going to try, I'm going to have to play my best, but I don't know, you should expect to have to do that anyway, so it's fine. Absolutely no reason not to think I back myself. Oh, I thought that was in. Oh, that's good hand. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it's almost like a prod volley under the grill, but it's hit been hit so clean it cuts down. He's read that so it's a great cool. shot. Incoming, Gordo's not going to be worried about that. He's happy, you know, he's happy forcing, so yeah, yeah, yeah. he's going to have a free hit. 40 15 as well. If there's one player you probably wouldn't want to be um, trying to defend one and two against, probably Lewis Gordon or Will Flynn or Lewis Williams or Rob Fay. Yeah, yeah. Which isn't. No one's to mind. I'm sorry if I've left that one out. <laughs> Doesn't know any good lobbers out there. <laughs> Where are we? One and two. I'll tell you what, a cut volley beats that. Uh, yeah, yeah. A good cut just, volley beats. Just back yourself, so like a proper fuzzball, do you know what I mean? Like, Lewis might leave it. I'll tell you what, it's absolutely savage. Imagine seeing a cut, like a fuzzball cut volley here now. Lewis is going to leave it because he's never going to cut it off. Darren's got the call to make. He'll be still there. He'll be still there. Oh, of course he will. And we've got a very good view of it right here. At the end of the day, that's the advantage when you're still in the back. Like, you're right over that ball. So here we go. Chase one and two, 40 15 for seven all. This is fantastic. Hello. PK? Oh, it's got a fault. It's got a fault. It's got a fault. It's got a fault. 
Gordo's thinking, damn. Looks decent. He's volleyed it. Get inside that. Who's Williams? He's never playing that as a backhand, is he? He rates his backhand main wall, looks good. Yeah, he it. But you get inside that, surely. I was surprised. He's got it early for the backhand. 30 40. Still getting point. Serve the fault going for the perfect, so that's fine. I'll tell you what the big brain players here, Gavin. That's a good shot. Curling away all the time. There's not much else going on. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Gallery, maybe. Right, so 15 all two chases. Uh, again, both very winnable for Lewis Gordon. I think he's just changed his head back around potentially. Uh, but this is great. I mean, with the matches coming up, who do you think this is more important for, the Slayers or the Forces? This is important for the Forces. I mean, they went down. Well, they both, they both did. So with yeah, the matches, the brothers coming up, who do you think? Yes. Just oh, taking the gallery there again. Second gallery choice. Open forehand. I put worse. I put last gallery. Gallery's begging. 
just think it's important for the forces. Um, I think Bertie against Vaughan. Vaughan's going to be off a really good run of form. That's going to be a great match. It's going to be a great match. And Bertie Here as well, home. Bertie's home. Yeah. So, oh, he's left it. I'll tell you what. Let's chase on. Yeah, it's a bad lead. One of the bad lead. That's harsh. That's not that, he was just not interested in that for the work guy, was he? At Queen's then, like that. Deep could be on the money. It is. That's very good. Oh, it's a good return. Oh, just thinks it was down. No, it was up. It was up. 30-15 Gordo. So I think this might be the first, first time he's led. He's led. Yeah, I agree. 30-15 and a good chase incoming. That's a good sir. Back in the way. It's a great return. Floor side wall. Hi. Got a real bad. Oh wow, get it, get it, get it, get it. So, uh, that's an absolutely unbelievable bet. <laughs> it's getting round that ball as well, but it's the forehand side, like that's super. Gordon cool, uh, looking to silence a few doubters in the business end of the match. Yeah, I know. I mean Lewis would be gutted with that back that, that forehand he's got. Off the back wall, he's got an open court and he's hit straight tambour. So. As we see the replay there. Williams literally takes a side step to the left as Gordo hits that. He's got no chance of recovering. I still think Lewis Williams is going to win this bet. Sorry. Do you know what I mean? I think it's getting tight. I know Lewis Gordon's in, in the box seat, but I just think. Like you said, Lewis Williams won't care. He will not he's, care. He doesn't quite care at all. He just goes about his business, does his thing. He's, you know. I know, I know. A proven record of winning tight matches, so this is just all. This is his wheelhouse. <laughs> Said right there with a great cut volley. Better than three. It's good, sir. Is that a foul? No. Did he catch it on the way up? That's a great ball. Does he get that? Oh, no, that's a shame. It's going to be better than seven. I'm going to do that. 40 30, game point. Oh, juice, bro. Go on, juice. That bit is the side wall's a bit early. Yeah. Just to prove that the first one wasn't free. <laughs> yeah, I can hit it on demand. <laughs> um, neither player wants to pick up a ball for each other. Love it. Yeah, it's interesting, you know. First game, second game, good shot. Here's a ball. Seven all. No, thank you. Get your own. the score so far there's not been I mean a couple of nine threes yesterday but otherwise it's been very tight I'd like to see Lewis Williams cut that and turn herself up on the volley in it I know it's not necessarily his first option but I'd just like to see him cut that off put the pressure back on Gordo Seven. One game away now for the Slayers. I think the, uh, the old wobbly hands might come into play here from the from those goals. Like, he's been behind the whole match, he's had to graft so hard to get in this position. Oh, wow. Wow. Wobbly hand, you said. He just Break. unloads a forehand main wall dead on the volley there. It's, top. it's unbelievable. Break. Break. PK. No, we got railroad PK. Oh. 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 That's one of them where you know when you hit a four, you still got to keep your arm, your arm the ball. Yeah, just in case. That looks a bit deep. Could have been floor back. Well, I like the fact he's taking that on the volley. Ascendancy, and that's the difference there. Lewis has like, chosen to get an arm volley back. Williams has elected to take take it off the back wall. It's not really a good outcome by leaving that. You well, boast it back out and you're back under pressure. Great width from Gordo. Oh yeah, certainly not. Certainly not having a crack there, but forced him backwards. There was no back wall shot there. To be honest, I'm definitely thinking if I'm leaving that for the back wall, the worst case scenario. Anyway, anyway, 15 love. First gallery worse than you are. Contrasting chases. That's it. Uh, you've got to win this first point. 
don't particularly like being an easy chase when it's, uh, this kind of pressure. Too many choices. Oh, it's loose. Don't serve that way. It's got to be gallery. Oh, he's funny. Oh, just walks back to the dead on his face of stone. Unbelievable. 46 points to 42 to 1. Couldn't be tighter. It's a good volley. Yeah, he's not playing a backhand. Gordo, arms wide. What's happening? It's better. It's that actually, there's a bit more zip on that force from Williams there. There's a bit more on that. Match points. Three of them. High serve. Fault. Looked like it was going to be good though. Four back wall. Backhand corner. Yes. Yeah, great shot. You won't be gutted though. Match point chase. Is that a stroke? A stroke. 15-40. Gordo's happy with that. Thanks Darren. Oh dear. That's just get out. He's going to have to, isn't he? No. 30 40. Gordo, got to throw something, something half tight in here. Make him play. 40 30. Match point number three. High serve. Sidewalk short again. Oh, it's a bit of a shank. Oh, wow. Way. Wow. Way. He will be pushed to lose to. Juice from 40 laugh. This is one of them where you need to just compose yourself. Take a few bounces to the ball. Really think about this next ball. You'd have to say Lewis Williams hasn't had to do anything amazing from 40 love there. Oh, just misses the grill. Oh! You reckon your hand moves the support? Grips are available from the pro shop. It's that pesky forehand volley again. Just a little bit too open on it, I think. Advantage Williams. He just loves it. Mate, it'd be like a hyena smelling blood in the air of But, again, he hasn't had to do much from 40 love, has he? He's been kind of given a few chances. That's a great ball. Great ball. Back to you. Still just two points away. Pressure still on Williams. This is why we love the Super League. Take a second, take a breath. Now I think if I finish Williams, I'll be thinking, let's go and chase and see what he's got. Short, he's encouraged the volley return. It's in. Oh, it's over. Better than second. Did you left that? I think off that one, yeah. Oh, I don't know, man. It's tough, isn't it? Because you think, oh, I can do something with that. But seven all juice, of course, if you mess that up, you're going to hate yourself. Can corner. Yes, it is. That's it. I'll tell you what, who I'd like to see. I'd like to see Lewis Williams against Bryn Sayers, but I want them to start at eight all. <laughs> Just ultimate bottle. Like, hang on a minute, it's the longest juice game ever. Got a nice new angle on the screen. Oh, we watched that one. Oh. I'll tell you what. Straight to Williams half volley and he, he got it as well. I know, I thought he'd get that. Would have been an absolute heartbreaker not to go over as we see the racket abuse from Gordon. Casual. Advantage hazard better than second. It's gonna you have to think that Gordo's gonna have a, a shot here. We're definitely gonna have a shot now. I think I'm standing back. I think it's gonna be a high back wall. That's the ultimate shot that there is. He stood up looking for the volley. That's it. Second serve railroad. It's as good as you can get. Instagram. That's ben Gates is and Pete will be smashing that all over the TRA Instagram. That oh. is incredible and rightly, rightly fitting this match. Eight games all. <laughs> Unbelievable. That is absolutely awesome. He's missed it. He's never played a backhand there, is he? Well, it's a good, it's good hand, but you're out of position. <laughs> Great lay 
length as well, two miles before the back wall. <laughs> Incredible. Both these guys have made some shots in here, which is just wow, world class. That's a good sign. Yep. 15 love. I'll tell you what. 8 7 down, 40 love down. It's a low, low back wall railway, which is. Oh my god, no way. No. Yes way. way. Yes way. Gets it done every time. Main wall back wall, half volley grill. Forty love at eight seven. Do you think the fact that he's that Bordeaux was up? Do you think the fact that he's lost two six five in the third to Lewis? Like, do you think that plays on it? I don't think so. Much. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, let's enjoy it again. That is incredible. <laughs> oh, and he looks straight up at us as well. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, no, I don't think the pass to be wearing on him. Look at that! He's just too much points. He's so excited. And Claire Fay going ballistic in the bed on him, rightly so. That's in. Forty love, here we go. We've now got three match points the other way. What a match. Better than two, I think we're being told. That's a pretty good serve. Oh, I tell you what, that was not far away. 15, 40. Come on, we want to see a juice. Come on, come on. That's good. That's a good get. Mabel Tambor wins. Oh, it's not one. That's a great volley. Wow! When the chips are down, what a shot. 30, 40. Get down, get down. Just as well. Both these players are pretty happy with this result going into the last night because it's just like a great tight game. Oh, I know. But I win this. Do you want to win? What's the team, isn't it? You want the team to win? I want, I want Gordo to win this point. I, I want a juice. Nick? Could be in. That's a great shot. Yeah, there's danger there. That's a top get. That is a top get. Oh! oh! Another match! There it is! He's thrown his racket! Nine games to eight to Lewis Williams. Mate, he gets it done. He gets it done. And he's done it again. He's done it again. Pulled the rabbit out of the hat. The magician. I can't believe that. What an encounter that was, first and nine. We could have I can't believe. I'm absolutely stunned. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. But Not because of the result, just the brilliant. manner of it. The, the tension of it. is absolutely sensational. That was fantastic. No. Lewis Williams led the whole way through that until Gordo went 8 7 up. Match points at 40 love and still, still got to turn it around. <laughs> Unbelievable. That is absolutely out of this world. I hope people watch that back on the stream because. God, that's pure entertainment. Yeah, that's a great match. That's great pure match. entertainment. And uh, only the first match of three, though. Could mean nothing. <laughs> <laughs> could, could mean nothing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Tough to... Hello, my name is Sam Candy, and I'm the visor at FLM. Uh, FLM are proudly sponsoring the National League and we are really looking forward to the Super League in April which is taking place over four days at Queen's Club. This short and sweet video is simply an introduction to what we do and how we do it. Specifically, how we help people in sport. So what is it that we actually do? Well, we help people be in the best possible financial position they can be. Specifically, we ensure that clients achieve their goals and aspirations through holistic and quality financial planning. We work for people long term to build a plan and importantly, stick to it. We also ensure to educate and improve understanding of the broader financial world um, to those who don't work in the industry. 
When it comes to understanding and education on finance, we feel the sport industry specifically is somewhat overlooked, where people have less possibly conversations on finances and there is typically no centralised wellbeing service that would otherwise be available in a classic 9 to 5 uh, office setting. How people are paid, career options, length of career, as well as structure, employed, self-employed or through a limited company, these are all completely different um, for the sports industry. Very difficult to navigate through all of this and that's where we're coming. As the key sponsor of the IRTPA's National League, I'm available to you to help. If you are interested in learning more, upskilling financially, getting a plan together to be in a better position, please do reach out. Thank you and looking forward to the Super League in April. Hello, my name is Sam Candy and I'm the visor at FLM. Uh, FLM are proudly sponsoring the National League and we are really looking forward to the Super League in April, which is taking place over four days at Queen's Club. This short and sweet video is simply an introduction to what we do and how we do it. Specifically, how we help people in sport. So what is it that we actually do? Well, we help people be in the best possible financial position they can be. Specifically, we ensure that clients achieve their goals and aspirations through holistic and quality financial planning. We work for people long term to build a plan and importantly, stick to it. We also ensure to educate and improve understanding of the broader financial world um, to those who don't work in the industry. When it comes to understanding and education on finance, we feel the sport industry specifically is somewhat overlooked where people have less possibly conversations on finances and there is typically no centralised wellbeing service that would otherwise be available in a classic 9 to 5 uh, office setting. How people are paid, career options, length of career, as well as structure, employed, self-employed or through a limited company, these are all completely different um, for the sports industry. Very difficult to navigate through all of this and that's where we come in. As the key sponsor of the IRTPA's National League, I'm available to you to help. If you are interested in learning more, upskilling financially, and getting a plan together to be in a better position, please do reach out. Thank you and looking forward to the Super League in April.
Hello, my name is Sam Candy and I'm the visor at FLM. Uh, FLM are proudly sponsoring the National League and we are really looking forward to the Super League in April, which is taking place over four days at the Queen's Club. This short and sweet video is simply an introduction to what we do and how we do it. Specifically, how we help people in sport. So what is it that we actually do? Well, we help people be in the best possible financial position they can be. Specifically, we ensure that clients achieve their goals and aspirations through holistic and quality financial planning. We work for people long term to build a plan and importantly, stick to it. We also ensure to educate and improve understanding of the broader financial world um, to those who don't work in the industry. When it comes to understanding and education on finance, we feel the sports industry specifically is somewhat overlooked, where people have less possibly conversations on finances and there are typically no centralised wellbeing service that would otherwise be available in a classic 9 to 5 uh, office setting. How people are paid, career options, length of career, as well as structure, employed, self-employed or through a limited company, these are all completely different um, for the sports industry. Very difficult to navigate through all of this and that's where we come in. As the key sponsor of the IRTPA's National League, I'm available to you to help. If you are interested in learning more, upskilling financially, getting a plan together to be in a better position, please do reach out. Thank you and looking forward to the Super League in April. Hello, my name is Sam Candy and I'm the visor at FLM. Uh, FLM are proudly sponsoring the National League and we are really looking forward to the Super League in April, which is taking place over four days at the Queen's Club. This short and sweet video is simply an introduction to what we do and how we do it. Specifically, how we help people in sport. So what is it that we actually do? Well, we help people be in the best possible financial position they can be. Specifically, we ensure that clients achieve their goals and aspirations through holistic and quality financial planning. We work for people long term to build a plan and importantly, stick to it. We also ensure to educate and improve understanding of the broader financial world and to those who don't work in the industry. When it comes to understanding and education on finance, we feel the sport industry specifically is somewhat overlooked where people have less possibly conversations on finances 
and there is simply no centralised wellbeing service that would otherwise be available in a classic 9 to 5 uh, office setting. How people are paid, career options, length of career, as well as structure, employed, self-employed or through a limited company, these are all completely different um, for the sports industry. Very difficult to navigate through all of this and that's where we come in. As the key sponsor of the IRTPA's National League, I'm available to you to help. If you are interested in learning more, upskilling financially and getting a plan together to be in a better position, please do reach out. Thank you and looking forward to the Super League in April. Uh, welcome back to the Queen's Club for yet another match of this year's FLM Super League. We will have some expert commentators coming up shortly, but just while we do the player introductions, uh, this is the second match of the fixture between the Slayers and the Forces. Just missed. Uh, if you're just joining us, you will have just missed the match uh, before between Lewis Gordon off the Slayers and Lewis Williams from the Forces. That went eight all. Both players having multiple match points. In the end, it was Williams who was the victor. So this is the doubles uh, in this particular fixture. This will be the one and two uh, players in each team playing the doubles today and let's get to the introductions just as the players are about to get underway uh, firstly we'll have Bryn Sayers home club professional here doubles ranked number eight to be playing with Ben Taylor Matthews at this year's world doubles championships the finals of that particular event way back in 2009 and won the British Open here at Queen's in 2013. Tonight he's partnered up with fellow Queen's Club professional Neil McKenzie playing off a doubles handicap of 9.3 uh, and Neil has made the Open of the US Open, semi-final of the US Open in 2020. Their opponents today Rob and Claire Fay. Rob still has a doubles world ranking of number four. He's playing with Nikki Howell at this year's World Championships. He's playing with his wife, Claire, ladies world champion. Your marker today will be Nino Marola from Radley. So we'll have Bryn serving to Rob to start us off.
high serve of Rins at Queen's already proving effective. Just getting the perfect length to trouble Claire. You see up the height of the rafters. He's serving that so much higher than anybody else is here this week. It's a great angle here. Just, you just see how just how high this serve goes. Right up to the heart of that light. That's a perfect length on it yet again. It's uh, two fantastic ones to start the game off. And now we'll see if Neil McKenzie can do the same. Also serving that high serve now to Claire. You see just the difference in height there. as that ball tips over you can see just how much height comes off this Brinsay serve it's called a home court advantage right there so now we see at the phase down the service end for the first time and they played together at the Australian Open. Rob was up in the galleries uh, for the most part, and Claire was playing back. Doesn't look how they're shaping up to play at the moment. Ch second chase is the line to yes, so Claire just seeding that chase. <coughs> so now they're playing with Rob up. I think part of the, I mean. Claire has been practicing with Rob so much, so they will know each other's games. But the difference in handicap between Rob and Claire and between Bryn and Neil means that Bryn and Rob will both have to impose themselves somewhat on the match. One of the things with Claire playing up is that she can struggle sometimes with that harder hit ball. So you imagine that she'll be playing a little bit deeper uh, than perhaps some of the 18-year-old boys who, I'm thinking like a Henry Hemman, who will throw themselves right up there at the door. railroads for a chase of first gallery. And so 
Oddly enough, for a Queen's Club pair, this is the first time that Bryn and Neil have played together in a competitive doubles match. Now with this, Rob's going up at the galleries now, switching up their tactics a bit. Rob's just a bit bolder to push up that little bit further for that long gallery chase. Oh, he nearly finds a winning gallery. Claire nearly finds a winning gallery too. And it's a chase, so looking for any hazard will do. Bryn eventually finds the winner. winning Gary at Fort Rub tonight now that he's supposedly retired and these matches are a little bit, little bit more of an exhibition for him he's very happy to throw in a lot of those winning galleries when he can Using to go in the board, Nino just able to grab it. There we go. Back to the action. One chase, Ben. Don't go to the replay just yet. <laughs> All you missed was a fault, so. And that error means we can now go to the replay. <laughs> just neatly slots it into that winning gallery like it's nothing. So there will be one more match uh, after this tonight, and that will be between Vaughan Hamilton and Bertie Vallett. And that promises to be quite the contest as well. Both of them just breaking through to single-figure handicaps in the last few months. Both looking to bed themselves down there. of gallery chases. And the phase not really finding a good rhythm yet. Claire does feel just a little bit exposed at the moment. Playing against two home court 
professionals as well. They're proving she can bring the pace and throw in a couple of forces. And it's just too good from Bryn. Just able to find that line onto the underside of the winning gallery is very difficult shot to play. So as a pair, uh, Faye's played the Australian Open together, and uh, that was Claire's first semi-final by right. She made a semi-final of the US Open uh, almost a decade ago now, but that was due to a walkover in the quarterfinals. This is the first time by right that she made it to that semi-final. And then played National League together in a number of doubles matches when they were both based at Preston Hall. And the, in the older iteration of this event, now we are in the Super League iteration. And what a innovation it has been. Great event here at Queen's Club this week. So chase of two. Faye's really need to get on the board here now. They've got the serve. Can they manufacture some points from it? But that's a stick on the corner there. Queen's Club Pros winning three and four from the serve and two and three from the hazard. That last shot just Rob showing his ears a bit. And in the past, he might be able to run that down, but those knees don't move like they once did. <laughs> Back live. Claire. Sorry, Neil put on in the winning gallery. That's a fault. Faye's really not firing just yet. Green is looking so good at the moment on his home court. <laughs> Viewers may remember some six years ago now. Rob and Bryn played an eliminator match here at Queen's. It was the first time that streaming had been installed at Queen's Club. There's that perfect serve again. It's worth going back and having a, a rewatch of that if you have a, a lazy Sunday afternoon because it is a fantastic match. Everyone always talks about that 2018 World Championship final between Rob and Camden, but the, the eliminator between Rob and Bryn was amazing as well. <laughs> the 
The Eliminator race, of course, is shaping up nicely. There's about a quarter of the race still to come. It looks like we've got a fairly settled top four who will be playing in those Eliminators. Last one who can still realistically challenge at the moment. Faye is just adjusting his socks. Doesn't like that shoe. Yeah, last one who can realistically challenge is Bryn, but he would have to have an amazing run over the next little bit in order to be able to seriously dethrone the current number four in that world race, who is Ben Taylor Matthews. The shoe is proving quite troublesome, really. <laughs> Rob has talked in the past and a warning to just mute yourself for the next 15 seconds if you're squirmish. He's talked in the past about how he play a l uh, through an open singles and doubles. And by the end of it, all his toenails will be falling off in those shoes. Welcome back to any squeamish listeners. You are probably glad I didn't. You didn't hear that one. One thing we saw in the latter years before phase of um, Rob's official retirement is that because he was being caught by a number of players in the quarters and the semis, he was playing longer and longer matches. So by the time he came against Cam or John or Chris Chapman in the finals, he had significantly more tennis under his belt and that's not really what he could afford given that he's trying to conserve his body as much as possible but he's supposedly retired now which means which means he will only show up to these events if he feels like he wants to if there's a big enough cash prize or if in the case of the US Open if Nicky Howe begs him hard enough or if it's only a three set tournament instead of a five set tournament Faye's still yet to get a game on the board. I'd love to, to break that donut. At the moment it's looking pretty tough. A nine love result would be useful in the MVP standings yep. unfortunately for the pair for the Slayers both of them were losers in their first round matches so given that the MVP most likely is going to be winning all three I hazard to suggest that they're probably out of that competition already 
by some major defeats tomorrow. Faye's definitely targeting those galleries whenever they get a chance to. Seeing them use the angle on that galleries all through the match. Try and get down that service end, but really being able to do anything with it once they get there. They're going for a drag serve on that second gallery chase. On the board, the phase. I'll be happy with that result. Set a gallery chase, go down the other end, put it in the hazards. It's a decent enough game plan, really. Fantastic stuff from the, gal um, from the galleries by Claire. And just finished off by Rob. Claire is as this match is progressing, getting a little bit braver in those galleries, just edging a little bit further forward. Claire's just a little bit too close to the side galleries when she's playing up. See some of the top players in that position will just take a little bit of a step further to the right and really attack that forehand but volley for stuff coming down the middle of the court but it may also be a tactical decision just to let Rob play a few more that are coming down that middle onto his backhand volley. Just such a big weapon in his arsenal, that backhand volley from Rob. Has a chase here now. Brings on Bobble second one has a chase. One to the Queen's Club Pros, Sayers Slayers. Remember this is set to nine in this format. So they need another three in order to take the match. And the way they're playing right now, it doesn't look like those three are particularly far away to be honest.
So, worth just reminding you that there will be more action on the tennis court tomorrow. We have the final round robin matches of this event. And then on Saturday from midday, we will have the final following week we'll be up in Manchester for the Category A Championships also known as the Nought Nines as <laughs> Neil just floats that one in this match looks like it might get us back on schedule after the Battle of the Lewises earlier this evening A second game now for the phase. I don't think you'd suggest that Rob is playing anywhere near his best tennis uh, tonight. I think sometimes when he feels in a bit of an exhibition mood, it can be a little tough to watch compared to his absolute best but the thing is to play at that level which we saw for example in the 2022 World Championships that requires months of training and practice training, practice and conditioning to get into the state to play a world championship uh, and he's, he's essentially just rocked up here with no preparation really aside from working towards that world championships in Chicago for those hazard chases, just missed them low and high on those two points. <laughs> Be interesting to see how he goes at those World Doubles Championships, playing with Nicky Howe. They've played together for a number of years before Rob's singles retirement so 8-1 now to the Slayers to Queen's Club Professionals some of the, the vintage Rob play last night in the singles against Rob Shakeman with a bit of wall climbing and the like but it's not really what's been on offer this evening
there's a wall climb just can actually result in the ball coming his way unfortunately but so many great photographs uh, thinking of the likes of uh, Tim Edwards uh, Rob climbing that wall Tim Edwards also Bust, known as Buster Edwards on Instagram some great snaps of real tennis and rackets and a bit of paddle as well great to have such a fantastic supporter and photographer in the game such as Tim so often it goes underappreciated those photos that we see out after lights Likes it, Tim. Also, uh, Michael Doe over in the US. Some great photos from him there. Back in the 2016 World Championships. Those, it's those photographs, those action shots that sh just show how athletic some of these professionals are that help sell the game and they provide an invaluable and often underappreciated service. So big shout out to all those great photographers out there, especially Tim. Great way to pick up their second game. A bit of ping pong volley, really. Great stuff from the phase. comment on, on Tim. He's been collaborating with Nick Jones and RT42 to document the dimensions of all the real tennis courts in the world. So they've been on a bit of a tour around the real tennis playing countries, taking standardised pictures of every court and standardised measurements so we can have a true comparison. Giles Doy as well, if you've not seen, head over to his website for a great comparison of the dimensions of all the courts in the world. It's got a great site where you can overlay various courts on each other and just get a sense of how different the various courts in the world are and how some dimensions like the timbre angle and the floor length and the, the dead ons area all make a difference as to which courts are favoured various different people and different styles of play it's a great project it's still ongoing there's a fraction more courts to get in the world for that so we're at 30 love with the Slayers in just two more points and there is one of them no I've got my score wrong
So yeah, so apologies, the score was the, the wrong way around just there. So we are now 3-8 to the uh, Slayers. Given that they were potentially looking down the barrel of a 9 love, recovering those three gains has been pretty useful. So this might be it now. Now they're two points away. to end on the Sayers Slayers take the match 9 games to 3 and level it up at 1 all in the overall fixture great tennis there uh, the phase a little bit slow to start in the end the pairing from the Queen's Club, just too strong. They take the match. And we will go into a decider. This will be very, very important for the context of the match. We have Vaughan Hamilton next up against uh, Bertie Vallet, which you imagine because that will not only get the point for winning the match, they'll also get the point for winning the overall tie. It will be very important in the end of the tournament. One last look at the stats. Uh, and we will take a short break before coming back with that final match between Bertie and Vaughan. My name has been Ben Gatenbeek. We hope to see you very soon. Sam Candy and I'm the advisor at FLM. Uh, FLM are proudly sponsoring the National League and we are really looking forward to the Super League in April which is taking place over four days at the Queen's Club. This short and sweet video is simply an introduction to what we do and how we do it. Specifically, how we help people in sport. So what is it that we actually do? Well, we help people be in the best possible financial position they can be. Specifically, we ensure that clients achieve their goals and aspirations through holistic and quality financial planning. We work with people long term to build a plan and importantly, stick to it. We also ensure to educate and improve understanding of the broader financial world um, to those who don't work in the industry. When it comes to understanding and education on finance, we feel the sports industry specifically is somewhat overlooked, where people have less possibly conversations on finances and there are typically no centralised wellbeing service that would otherwise be available in a classic 9 to 5 uh, office setting. How people are paid, career options, length of career, as well as structure, employed, self-employed or through a limited company. These are all completely different um, for the sports industry. Very difficult to navigate through all of this, and that's where we come in. As the key sponsor of the IRTPA's National League, I'm available to you to help. If you are interested in learning more, upskilling financially, and getting a plan together to be in a better position, please do reach out. Thank you, and looking forward to the Super League in April.
Hello, my name is Sam Candy and I'm the visor at FLM. Uh, FLM are proudly sponsoring the National League and we are really looking forward to the Super League in April, which is taking place over four days at the Queen's Club. This short and sweet video is simply an introduction to what we do and how we do it. Specifically, how we help people in sport. So what is it that we actually do? Well, we help people be in the best possible financial position they can be. Specifically, we ensure that clients achieve their goals and aspirations through holistic and quality financial planning. We work with people long term to build a plan and importantly, stick to it. We also ensure to educate and improve understanding of the broader financial world um, to those who don't work in the industry. When it comes to understanding and education on finance, we feel the sport industry specifically is somewhat overlooked, where people have less possibly conversations on finances and there are typically no centralised wellbeing service that would otherwise be available in a classic 9 to 5 uh, office setting. How people are paid, career options, length of career, as well as structure, employed, self-employed or through a limited company, these are all completely different. Um, for the sports industry. Very difficult to navigate through all of this and that's where we come in. As the key sponsor of the IRTPA's National League, I'm available to you to help. If you are interested in learning more, upskilling financially and getting a plan together to be in a better position, please do reach out. Thank you and looking forward to the Super League in April. Welcome back to the Queen's Lamp for the last time this evening. And we have a great match on our hands tonight. Because we have a live third fixture. So these are the fourth string players for each team. Both players just re dipped into the single figures recently and a win will be very important for each of them so because this is a live match we not only have the one point on offer for winning the match we also have a bonus point available for winning the overall fixture and you imagine that that would be a critical come up Saturday let's have a quick uh, look just at how the standings are shaping up. This is for the MVP. Currently there are three players with two wins and Vaughan will be looking to join them uh, today. Which means that three, possibly four players will go into uh, into Friday with a chance to take out that MVP. Meanwhile, the overall match rankings at the moment, Shakeman's henchman well out in front on seven points, Matthews Mavericks on three, and both the Slayers and the Forcers on two apiece, and this match is effectively worth two points. So the winner of this match, the team that wins this match, will go into second place on the standings, guaranteed, whilst the team that loses this match will stay in last place. I think. And they won't be out of it just yet, but it'll be very, very difficult for them.
so let's introduce the players. Starting with Vaughan Hamilton. And you have 8.3. Some great results in recent times to get his handicap down to that level. And currently at the uh, assistant professional at the Presser Tennis Club. Was previously working at Canford before that. straight into the match now we'll do the remainder of the introductions as the match um, develops our marker again will be uh, Nino Marola from Radley Valet to get us underway. <coughs> so at the British Open this year, Valet made a good run into the uh, second round. He came up against Steve Vagone and he served drag serves through most of that particular event. We'll see if we see any of those this evening. Just sticking to that railroad. tight railroad just getting Vaughan really close to that battery wall Vaughan is carrying that bright orange brand new Prestead racket that we saw Levi playing with earlier today look absolutely stunning So just continuing the play introductions, uh, Vaughan career highlights. And you see those category Bs and category Cs. And you see that progression up through the ranks. Now that he's got single figures, he'll be playing in the category As and looking to make a bit of a dent into some of the top players. Play some of the opens for the first time. Very nicely put away into the winning gallery there. just spun back the wrong way 
Yeah, so continuing introductions of Vaughan uh, 1 3 qualifying at the Seacourt Silver Racket this year. And it made it all the way through to the semi final. The only non Seacourt player to do so. What a great run that was for him. Of Div 3 National Leagues recently. And three set match against Lewis Williams at his home court at Leamington. A great run by Vaughan over the last few months. Just misses. Oh no. It's been awarded as a point. I think it will hit the camera. I'm not 100% sure, but. It hit the dome camera that's in the, the dead on there. So. Game to Vaughan. bring that pace on that second shot. So Vaughan has a very similar style to somebody like Levi who's his head professional at Prestead. Very attritional style that will wear down your opponent, work them to both sides of the court and then bring the pace when needed. of the back neck. So let's have a, a quick look at Bertie Vallett, handicap 10.6, that's uh, gone out due to his loss last night. A court adjustment here at Queen's of 2.0 that would make sense because this is indeed his home court. And similarly to Vaughan, you can see the progression through the years, though he's had less of them. Up through those B and A grades. Now slugging it out with the big boys. Perfect boast there by Bertie, really. Just able to get the width around Vaughan. So, two love now to Hamilton. Serving his railroad particularly well tonight. First chase laid for Bertie. Definitely, you imagine he will need to spend a lot more time down the service end than he currently is doing. <laughs> so 
It wasn't pretty, but he got the result in the end, did Vaughan. Just lifts it up, lobs it down into that uh, grill. Continuing our look at Bertie Vallett, he was over in the US back in February for the Tuxedo Gold Racket, coming unstuck to another rising star of amateur tennis, Noah Motes. Also, in his recent form, he played the he played the. Uh, National Schoolboys Doubles Rackets competition here at the Queen's Club and that won in seven games representing Winchester that was indeed a fantastic final I was privileged to be in the top of the galleries of the rackets court here at Queen's. Lastly, the head-to-head the -head between these two. I played three times in that National League Div 3 and 4. With Vaughan leading the head-to-head 2-1. -to -head to one. Though, as you can see from the scores there, that very easily could be the other way. But Vaughan has a slight edge really on that. So more than a yard worse chases. But he's lost his racket. He will try and kick that, but once you lose your racket, you're not allowed to make a stroke with uh, with your feet. It's not not permitted to kick the ball over the net. It's a racket sport after all. Vaughan did well because uh, sometimes after your opponent drops a racket or something like that, it can be a bit of a distraction. But he just played it calmly as safely as he could. I say this as, as an amateur player who tends to lose his racket a lot. This doesn't seem like the grip's quite uh, grippy enough. Very tight call on the roof there by our marker Nino Marola. Nino currently working at Radley School with Chris Ronaldson and Alex Machen. A great 
great success that Radley Court has been. And it as it crosses 16 years of play. So this is the ball from Bertie just before. Goes for the volley, doesn't have the grip on it. Let's see it again here. That doesn't stick in the hand. <laughs> so Bertie is on the board, and you feel that's a big must for the forces now. With the way that they were dispatched in the doubles by the Slayers, you can't really pick them as strong favourites for making it through to the final on Saturday. makes Claire's life a little bit easier because she's playing in the Ladies Rackets Open doubles on that day. And they had to specifically alter the schedule of that tournament just to be able to make sure that if she did make the finals then she would still be able to play both. As it stands, all the Rackets plate matches will be over that time period when the final is on of the Super League. Looks to me like it's gone through the net. Just under the lip eye where that net cord attaches to. Hamilton really bringing the power now. It's not as big or as bulky as a Lewis Gordon or Lewis Williams. But he can really throw in a force. So let's have a quick look at this one just before. And yeah, that's gone underneath the, top the net cord just between the uh, wall attaches to the net. Great eyes there by our marker Nino Marola to call that down. So worse than five is the first chase. Great shot by Bertie, just able to beat the chase. Worst than one is the second chase. And a great volley by Vaughan. Yeah. 
He is on fire for one Hamilton. 5-1 now to the Slayers. This match shaping up very similar to the battle between the Faze and the Queen's Club Pros slightly earlier. Get out of trouble behind the back there from Vaughan. In the end, ultimately to no avail. So this is that ball, oh, it's not, my apologies, it's not, the, not the, the shot I was trying to show you but we'll go back live instead. So this is the not up call, very close. Worse than six is the first chase. there from Vaughan Hamilton really able to pin Bertie down into that backhand corner So 2-5 now, can Bertie make a run of it? These nine game sets do mean that I feel like you've put five on the board already and there's still such a long way to go. seen Bertie put out the drag serve yet. That's something that I've been waiting for. Served it very well against Steve Vagona in the match that he ultimately lost in the round of 16 of this year's British Open. Okay. 
Just a reminder, we do have plenty more coming to for you tomorrow. The matches will start at 2 p.m. We'll continue through to around about the same time uh, tomorrow. Two more first round matches for you. have the final starting on a Saturday at 12 o'clock. Do come down if you're in London and have a watch as Vaughan puts that into the Hazard Galleries to win the chase. Cannot really be affording to, to give easy balls into the forehand side when you're playing off a chase like that. Yeah, we've had some kick to it. has a chase putting it into the line gallery that is just nothing Vaughan can do about that <laughs> and a gratuitous between the legs from, from Bertie Vallett <laughs> That's very much the kind of shot that you see all Rackets players come up with all the time. is the chase and Vaughan has been so good at hacking at that length this evening Imagine that dead on defence from that force is something that Bertie's going to have to come across a lot more in his career. Not really found a good answer for it yet tonight. He's still young, got time to develop that shot. That one's not too bad though. There's a back to Juice. And it really needs this game. 6 2 would be a very big mountain to climb. So with the replay that I was trying to bring you earlier, so this is Bertie Valor at the receiving end. He really didn't need to play that behind the legs. It's just showing off, really. He very much could have played that just by moving a few steps to his left.
fourth juice now. This particular game running on a bit. And frustration trying from Valet. He really needs to keep his composure. He expects better from himself there, really. So, worse than five is the chase. And Vaughan Hamilton has been so good in their backhand corner tonight. Really testing Bertie up, just getting a perfect length to, to beat the chasers. Still fairly vocal for their home club player of Bertie Vallet. There's pl been plenty of Queen's club action so far tonight. That last ball pulled not up. So once again, it's been great to have FLM on board uh, sponsoring this event. We heard from one of their advisors, Sam, during the match between Edel and Flynn. They've been down here all week, uh, showing their support and giving back to this great game of real tennis. And also a big thanks to Ben Taylor Matthews, Susie Faulkner, and Alex Machen for helping put this event on. Right, so behind the scenes as we're chasing better than two. And that is not the body language you want to see from Bertie Bart if you are a forces supporter. Seven two now to Vaughan. The crowd getting really excited for Vaughan here. I think there's been a few drinks at the Queens Club bar. It's great to see Queens being rowdy. Something you always get here. That is a fantastic shot from Vaughan Hamilton. Just picks it up out of nowhere and just slides it onto the base of that timbre. This 
served that road really well tonight. Has Vaughan really getting the perfect length thing. A lot of spin and cut back on it. It's not an easy serve to serve here at Queen's. Dead on's getting really raucous now. Normally at the British Open, you'd, that would be reserved for the, for the sponsors and the big ticket holders. <laughs> Vaughan tries a between the leg shot of his own. Instead, we've got the nosebleed section. Quite literally. So Vaughan saying that the one between the legs he thought he touched um, but is happy to honour the opinion of the marker. So it will be two chases. Preparing that force all day long. It's been fantastic to watch. has just been a little bit too strong for Bertie over the course of this match. Big grill, big fist pump there. Bertie knows that's not good enough. So match point, this is for two points in the overall standings. A very short chase. So the Slayers win the fixture. Two points additionally goes to Vaughan Hamilton. Absolutely.
spectacular performance from him this evening as the Slayers take it two rubbers to one that match lasting 39 minutes very comprehensive showing in the end Um, and we'll just have one last look at where the standings are at the end of uh, the end of day two. So one match, one set of matches still to go uh, tomorrow. And that'll be the final on Saturday at two p.m. at uh, um, twelve noon rather. And two quick matches to finish the fixture. Eight nine. That amazing match between the two Lewises uh, to start us off this is the overall standings now now that we are uh, six matches in per team and Shankman's henchmen lead on seven points Sayers Slayers on four Matthews Mavericks on three and Phase Forces on two so given the forces are playing the Mavericks one of those two will get at least three points and given the henchmen are playing the slayers it's still anybody's um, to get into that uh, it's still anybody's to get into that uh, final match and for instance if the slayers beat the henchmen for love and the mavericks beat the forces for love then the sh uh, henchmen could even still go out on percentages. So all still to come. And then in the MVP standings, four players as yet undefeated. Flynn, Marola, Hamilton and Long. And it's going to come down to that game's lost statistic. Very, very tight between Flynn, Marola and Hamilton at the moment. Long definitely not out of it yet. Long will be playing McKenzie in a singles match tomorrow. Hamilton will be in the doubles against Shankman and Flynn. And then Marola is playing against Lewis and Gordon. All of that will be in the first match. So you imagine we will have our MVP by the end of that first match. But that's all from us here tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure having you with us this evening. And we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. All of us here at the Queen's Club, good night. <laughs>